welcome to the Madden America podcast, your source for science, psychiatry and social justice. Hello, this is James and welcome to episode 32 of the Madden America podcast. This week, I'm delighted to have been able to chat with Dr. Joanna Moncrief. Dr. Moncrief is a psychiatrist, academic and author. She has an interest in the history, philosophy and politics of psychiatry, and particularly in the use, misuse and misrepresentation of psychiatric drugs. As an author, Dr. Moncrief has written extensively on psychiatric drugs, and her books include The Myth of the Chemical Cure, A Straight-Talking Introduction to Psychiatric Drugs, and The Bitterest Pills, The Troubling Story of Antipsychotic Drugs. She is one of the founding members of the Critical Psychiatry Network, which consists of psychiatrists from around the world who are sceptical of the idea that mental disorders are simply brain diseases and of the dominance of the pharmaceutical industry. Joanna kindly made time to talk with me about the recent Lancet study into antidepressant efficacy. Joanna, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today for the Madden America podcast. I wanted to ask you about the recent study into antidepressant efficacy announced in The Lancet and widely covered in the UK news media on Thursday, February 22nd. You've written about some of the limitations of that study, including a piece for Madden America. So firstly, I wondered if you could help me understand how the study was undertaken and maybe what its aims or goals were. Yeah, absolutely. So the study is a meta-analysis. So that means that the authors have got the data from together from lots of different trials of antidepressants and combined the data to get an overall effect measure. And so they've taken lots and lots of randomized control trials comparing antidepressants and placebo, which is the usual way of doing a meta-analysis of this sort. But they've also added in studies that have compared different sorts of antidepressants against each other. And that actually is one of the problems of the of the study, because we know that studies that compare two different antidepressants actually get higher effect sizes overall than studies that compare an antidepressant and a placebo, presumably because in that situation, you're telling the participants that there's a chance of getting no treatment or getting the inactive treatment. And therefore, their expectations of recovery are lower. And you find that their response to antidepressants is lower than it is in comparative trials. Thank you. And so what were the main conclusions that the authors reached from their sizable meta-analysis? So the the main conclusion is that antidepressants are more effective than, than placebo. And that conclusion is what's been used as the basis of the headlines all over the world media to say that it's confirmed that antidepressants work. The problem with that conclusion is that, well, there are numerous problems with it, but one of the problems is that the way that they've analysed the data actually inflates the difference between antidepressants and placebo. And if you analyse the di- if you analyse the data differently, which in fact they did in their study in the appendices, if you get as far as reading them, they're actually finding effects that show that the difference between antidepressants and placebo are very small. So maybe I should just I'd just like to expand on that a bit more because it's quite a complex point. So the the data that they've analysed is what they call response rates. They define response in the same way that most trialists define response as the percentage of people whose rating depression rating scale scores drop by 50 percent or more during the study. Now, that is an arbitrary definition of response, and it's not the primary data that was collected. The primary data that is collected in these trials is the the score that people have on the depression rating scales. So what you should analyze in a trial and in a meta-analysis of trials is the primary data, is the scores on the rating scales. And if you analyze that data, as I said before, what you find is that difference between antidepressants and placebo in terms of of depression scores is very small and way below the difference that probably indicates a minimal clinically significant level of improvement. If you look at response rates, the data you come out with is the chance of responding to an antidepressant versus the chance of responding to a placebo. And because of certain features, statistical features of what happens when you categorize data, I've shown in some work that I did together with Irving Kirsch from the United States, that if you categorize data in that way, you actually can inflate the differences between 
um, the two groups between antidepressants and placebo in this case. That's probably the major limitation of this study because there was absolutely no reason why they could not have analysed the depression scores. Yeah. And that would be the more valid measure uh, to use for this meta-analysis. And when they do analyse that, as I say, it's in the appendices, they find the same as other meta-analyses have have found, and that is that the difference between antidepressants and placebo is very small. So that's the main limitation. Then there are other considerations. We, we know that not all the studies and the data on antidepressants is published, and they got some unpublished data, but they didn't get all unpublished data. We know that unpublished data is more likely to be negative. Yep. So there's still probably some unpublished data out there that would f- reduce further the the differences that they quote between placebo and antidepressants. And then there are the limitations of the trials themselves, the trials that are included in this meta-analysis. And these limitations of trials have been written about extensively by, by many authors now. One of the limitations of antidepressant trials is that although they're meant to be double blind, of course, antidepressants are active drugs They cause alterations and side effects that people notice, at least in some cases. So it's been shown that people can guess more accurately than would be predicted by chance whether they have got the active drug in a placebo-controlled trial. In other words, these trials are not truly double-blind. And because this is the case, it's likely that the people who are randomised to the antidepressant experience an amplified placebo response because they are able to guess, or some of them are able to guess, that they've got the active treatment. Most people who go into trials of antidepressants probably want the active treatment and think that that will be a good thing, and therefore their expectations of treatment are are likely to be high. Another problem with these trials is that they don't necessarily exclude people who are already taking antidepressants. Now, if you don't exclude those people, and then you randomise some of them to a placebo, those people are likely to experience withdrawal symptoms. There are certainly some of those people are included in some of the antidepressant trials. And that is a big problem for antidepressant trials, because as I know that you and many other people are aware, antidepressants are associated with a significant withdrawal syndrome in a proportion of people. And even for people who get through those withdrawal symptoms, they're likely to notice that they're not on their antidepressant anymore. So that will unblind the study. But also the withdrawal symptoms are often very unpleasant and often mimic the depression and anxiety that people have had before they went into the trial. So people may well think, or assessors may think, that they are experiencing a relapse of their underlying condition when actually they're just having a withdrawal from the antidepressant. Absolutely. And some of the conclusions were in terms of efficacy and some in terms of tolerability of antidepressants. But did the study go on to look at adverse effects or withdrawal effects? So that's the other extraordinary thing about this study is that they don't look at adverse effects at all. They look at dropout rates, but dropout rates are not the same as adverse effects. There are many people who experience adverse effects, who don't drop out, who will stick it out in the trial because they've been asked to to stick it out and they feel that's the right thing to do. So you really need to report rates of adverse effects and, and the authors haven't done this. So therefore, they can't make a balanced judgment about the pros and cons of taking antidepressants. They've only got a measure of the potential benefit, albeit, of course, an inflated one, as I've just explained. And also, I understood from looking at the trial that The outcomes measured seem to be quite short term, mainly eight weeks, but with a range of four to 12 weeks. And to be fair, the paper is called acute treatment. So the authors are clear about that. But I wondered if that was a limitation too. Yeah, no, that's a really important point. The majority of trials of antidepressants look at short term treatment, around eight weeks, sometimes up to 12 weeks, but rarely much longer than that. And of course, in real life, people are put on antidepressants for months, sometimes for years, And therefore, we really have very little clue as to the outcome of the ordinary way of prescribing these medications. Thank you so much for summarising the limitations for us. So given those limitations, what should people conclude about the efficacy of antidepressants compared in this study? So I think that the data on antidepressants versus placebo shows that the differences are very small and almost certainly not clinically relevant, not even detectable, in fact, to the people who take them or the people who are observing 
the people who take them. And therefore, and I think people need to have that information in order to make an informed decision about whether they want to try taking antidepressants or not. They also, of course, need to have information about all the adverse effects of antidepressants in order to uh, come to a balanced judgment about whether some possibly very small effects of antidepressants might be worth the cost in terms of the adverse effects that they produce. Thank you. And so does this study add anything significant to the evidence base for antidepressants? It's one of a number of studies that have been done. So has this moved us forward in our understanding? So this study actually doesn't add anything new. I don't think the authors actually claim that it adds anything new, but the media have have certainly claimed that. It has a it, it's a bigger data set than anyone's used before. That's the that's the only difference between this meta-analysis and many previous meta-analyses. Yeah. And what's really interesting is that the when they analyze the effect sizes, that's the, the, the depression rating scale scores, their results are actually very similar to a number of recent meta-analyses, all of which have come to the conclusion that the difference between placebo and antidepressants is very small. Joanna, if it's okay, I'd like to ask about the media response, because that to me was one of the most interesting parts of this. Because trials and studies are reported in journals all the time, but I've never before seen such a large media reaction to a study of this kind. And the headlines were sensational in claiming that this work should end all debate that the drugs are effective. I just wondered if you'd reflected on the media response. It was absolutely extraordinary. And what I found most depressing about it, I suppose, is that it was so uncritical. I mean, there were I was watching news programs and reading newspaper articles for most of Thursday, the twenty second of February, when the news when when the study was first reported, and there were no critical comments on this at all that I saw. Much later in the day, Newsnight had a at least had a critical voice on there and Channel 4 News did did ask me in, although they didn't really seem interested in my criticisms actually during the interview. <laughs> so so yes, I think I think what was really noticeable about the coverage is it was so uncritical. It just seemed to reproduce a press release. And I think the press release had come from the Science Media Center, which is an organization which I know receives quite a bit of funding from the pharmaceutical industry. I think that this level of coverage was partly prompted and partly urged because antidepressants have had quite bad press over the last few years. And I think this is a reaction of the psychiatric establishment and the pharmaceutical industry to the increasing accessibility and availability of a critical view of antidepressants, of people like me saying that the evidence you know, shows that they're really not very effective, if effective at all, and people like you and many, many others who who are able to now more publicly say how much you've been harmed by these substances. Thank you. And again, in the media, the claim was repeated in several newspapers that depression was undertreated in the UK, with figures given of up to a million more could benefit from antidepressant treatment. So I wondered if there was anything in the study that supports that claim. They were extraordinary claims and really worrying. Already we know that around 9% of the UK population are taking antidepressants. So to suggest that another million or so should be should be taking them is, uh, I think, very irresponsible, given what we know about the adverse effects they can produce. I think, I don't know, but you know, there's not a lot of data about the adverse effects. We hope that the most severe adverse effects are fairly rare. As I say, we don't know because there's not a lot of data, but even if they're rare, if you start putting another million people onto them, there'll be a lot of people who get those serious adverse effects. There didn't seem to be any logical connection between the reports of the study and the conclusion that a million more people should be put on this medication. You know, even if you take the study at its word without the criticisms of it, it was still saying no more than antidepressants are a bit more effective than placebo. And to conclude from that that a million more people should be having it is is obviously, uh, you know, doesn't make a lot of sense. And Joanna, because treatment with these drugs is a very complex thing, depression is difficult to diagnose, difficult to measure, difficult to compare like with like. Is it even possible to design a study that would meet the claim of ending all debate? This paper clearly doesn't do that. So is it possible to end the debate with a study of sufficiently rigorous design? 
I think it's very difficult. I think that's a really good question. I think it's very difficult to think quite how you could prove for once and for all that a drug treatment was an effective treatment for depression. You know, depression is a very complicated condition, but drugs are very complicated too. And they do all sorts of things to the brain and the body that we don't know, that we really haven't charted in great detail. So we're not really even sure what the drugs are doing in someone who doesn't have depression or even in an animal study in in the long term, certainly. And then you've got all the, the problems like you know how difficult it is to blind a to blind a study of a, of an active drug. Antidepressants now come from so many different chemical classes. It really just is the case that you know if you take an active substance that has some noticeable effects and compare it with a placebo, it will come out looking like an antidepressant. That's at least what what it looks like when you look at all the substances that have appeared a little bit better than a placebo when you when you do a trial of them. So that suggests to me that. A lot of the effect that's being measured in antidepressant trials is a is a small psychological effect or an effect of just being in a slightly different state of mind, a very non-specific effect anyway. Thank you. And Joanna, was there anything else that you'd like to add? I just want to add because obviously the, a lot of the media coverage has focused on people, on individuals who say that they've found antidepressants very helpful. And I think that's an important thing to address. So Obviously, there are many people out there who think that antidepressants have helped them a lot. And that's that's fine as long as people are aware of what the research evidence actually says and can make up their own minds. You know, if people then decide that they think antidepressants are worth trying and they're, they're ready to uh, put up with the risk of the side effects and they understand that the differences between drugs and placebo are small, and they understand that the idea that depression is a chemical imbalance has not ever been supported by research evidence. If people understand all those facts and then decide that you know they want to give antidepressants a try, that's absolutely fine. I think what's just really important is that people know that the story that is being told us by the institutions that created those headlines on Thursday is not the only view, and in, in my view and the view of many other people, not the correct view of the of the data. Absolutely, that's so important. Well, Joanna, I'm so grateful to you and the others for being that critical voice and for allowing us to see behind the headlines because not everyone has the time or even the desire to get stuck into a study. So we need people to step forward and present the critical case. Thank you very much. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to say it and to hopefully get it out to more people because that's really important. Well, I just want to thank Joanna for taking the time to chat with me. And you can read Joanna's response to the Lancet study by visiting madinamerica.com. So thank you so much for listening. And until next time, take care. Thank you for listening to the Madden America podcast. Visit madinamerica.com for more news, views and updates.